is where people would come through from the Shakespeare barn, from the courtyard that we just saw going into. We're not going to go in there. It's a vaccination centre. Go NHS. And uh, they probably want to vaccinate people rather than have us wandering around. But they'll then, people that want to pay money to come and see the Guildhall, on the tour that we're going to arrange for them, will go into this red barn. This is proposed to become a 45-seat auditorium, little tiny studio theatre, where people can see films about the venue, they can see models about the venue, how it would have looked, and they can get information. We've got lots and lots of information about the Guildhall that's not currently on display, and it'd be really, really cool to change that. Then they'll come out of this red barn, and they'll come down the corridor as part of their paid ticketed tour which would be exciting and a way that we can get a robust financial model for the Guildhall, which has always been previously a little bit of a problem. What we're going to do down this corridor, which is technically called St George's Passage, uh, is we're going to tell them the story of really exciting things involved with the site. So this site, this building, was founded in 1406 by a royal charter. And the royal charter was given to a man called John Brandon. John Brandon was the greatest pirate in the whole of Europe. What could be better than being able to tell a story about pirates? It's really exciting. And we're going to start talking about John Brandon and the pirates in this corridor. People are going to come down the corridor and on the way down the corridor we're going to take them through history, if you like. We're going to try, try and tell them all about the Elizabethan phase of, of the drama that went on here. William Shakespeare potentially coming, certainly his company did come. Robert Armin, William Shakespeare's comedian, who was born one street away from this venue, a King's Lynn boy, just like me, and a comedian, just like me. Then we're going to go through onto the Jacobean phase, James I. Then we're going to go through Charles I. They all sent companies of players here. Restoration drama was done here. Then we're going to go into the Georgian era and then the Regency theatre that was done in the building as well. We've got the whole spread of history in one building, right up to today. What's going on tonight in this venue is the question that everyone, hopefully by this stage, will be asking. We're then going to get people to turn the corner and this is going to become a really exciting place for children to get involved in history. At the moment this is a, a, a coffee shop called Crofters but that's going to hopefully it's envisaged move out of this space on the site which will then be a place that we can tell children all about the site and we can get them involved in building archways out of soft bricks and we can get involved in doing crayon rubbings and all sorts of stuff associated with the site to also tell them that this in the English Civil War was used as the gunpowder store, because gunpowder's great. They've had pirates, now they've got gunpowder. They've got the Cavaliers versus the Roundheads in the English Civil War, and that's where they used to store the gunpowder. It's also where the Guild, in the 1400s, used to bring in its, uh, its stock, because this was, of course, a big trade warehouse for the Guild when it wasn't being used for theatre. Then we're going to take them up the stairs and into the theatre, and that's going to be the real centrepiece of the tour. We want it to be exciting for people and we want to tell people all about the fantastic history of drama that's gone on in that space. It's the only room in the entire country that has a complete spread of the history of drama and that's really exciting and we need to tell people that. And it's one of the only places in Europe where you can see that. So it's got to be exciting for people, we hope. Every area of the site is going to have two different purposes. Broadly, a daytime use and an evening use. So the kids zone that we just talked about as part of the tour during the day, in the evening can become a 90 seat uh, second venue on site. So we've got the theatre upstairs, which is going to seat roughly 300. And then downstairs, we could have a nice little comedy, music, poetry, spoken word, a bit of uh, folk music in the evening maybe, going on in a 90 seat space downstairs. And the red barn that we said was going to become a 45 seat uh, sort of lecture layout space in the evening would be available for people to rent if they wanted to, to come and do talks like U3A or other interested groups in that space. So every single area of the site will be working both in a daytime way and an evening way so that this site really does become financially sustainable.